Welcome back to Coding Commanders. I'm Commander Candy, and today I'm going to show you how to build your very own virtual LAMP stack server. Step 1. Create a brand new virtual image. To download Oracle VirtualBox, go to Google and type download Oracle VirtualBox. Or you can check out the video description where I do have a link to this download page. We're going to start off, we're going to click on New to create our new image. We're going to name our image. I'm going to name mine My Lamp Server. For type, we're going to select Linux. And for version, we will select Ubuntu 64-bit. Then click Next. Basically, I'm just going to click through the settings, selecting whatever is already recommended to me. Step 2. Install Ubuntu Server. In order to download Ubuntu Server, you can go ahead and Google Download Ubuntu Server, or you can check out in the video description, I will link the Ubuntu download page. We are going to download Ubuntu Server 18.04.3 LTS. Then I'm going to make sure that my new virtual image is highlighted. Click Start. Click on the little folder icon and find my Ubuntu server download. Mine is saved under Downloads. Now I'm going to scale it to make my virtual box bigger so it's easier to read. I'm going to select English because I speak English. It already automatically detected my keyboard, English American. And basically, again, I'm just Clicking through the settings for the most part. Done. Done. Use entire disk. Done. Done. Yes, I'm sure I would like to continue. For my name, I'm going to put Commander Candy. For my server's name, I'm going to say Lamp-Queen. Pick a user. I'm going to make my username Commander. And then I'm going to select a password, repeat it to confirm my password. I'm going to go ahead and let it install OpenSSH for me. Done. Now we just wait for it to install. Step 3. Install Apache 2. That's our web server software. I'm here with the king of Linux gaming, Hatnix. To install Apache 2, we are going to simply type sudo apt install Apache 2. Remember, all the commands used in today's tutorial are available to you at codingcommanders.com slash lamp. Step 4, install MySQL. That's the database we're going to be using. To install MySQL, we're going to start by typing sudo apt install mysql-server. Then we're going to go ahead and type sudo mysql underscore secure underscore installation space utility. password plugin can be used to test passwords and improve security. It checks the strength of a password. If you like to set up validate password plugin, not today, not today, George. New password, let's set up a new password. Re-enter it. I'm not really using that secure password because this isn't for real, y'all. I'm just showing you how to do this. By default, a MySQL installation has an anonymous user, allowing anyone to log into MySQL without having to have a user account created for them. This is intended only for testing and to make the installation go a bit smoother. You should remove them before moving into a production environment. Remove anonymous user? Should we move, remove it now? No. Yeah, okay. So, we are going to type Y for yes. Normally, root should only be allowed to connect from local host. 
This ensures that someone cannot guess at the root password from the network. Disallow root login remotely? Yeah. Why would we want somebody to remote? By default, MySQL comes with a database named Test that anyone can access. This is also intended only for testing and should be removed before moving into a production environment. We're not in a production environment and we are creating the server as a development server for testing purposes. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep that test database for now. Reload privilege tables now? Sure, why not? Step five, install PHP. That's our server side programming language. To install PHP, we are gonna type sudo apt install PHP, and then we're gonna add the Apache 2 mod, lib apache2 mod PHP. Step six, we're gonna change our network connection from NAT NAT to bridged adapter. Now we're gonna type shut down now in order to power off our virtual machine. Once you're powered down, go into your settings, go to network, and it probably says NAT NAT right now. You're gonna go ahead and change it to bridged adapter and then hit okay. Step seven, delete the Apache 2 default page. Now I'm going to check my IP address by typing ifconfig. And I can see that the IP address is 192.168.1.76. Now I'm going to type that IP address into my web browser. Apache 2 Ubuntu default page. This is what I'm famous for, you guys, okay? This is the default welcome page used to test the correct operation of the Apache 2 server after installation of Ubuntu systems and we're going to delete it but first let's give ourselves permission change directories to the directory slash bar when you have that slash that means we're going back to root so there's a directory called bar inside the root directory and in that bar directory is another directory called www and inside www is a directory called HTML boom now let's see what's up in this bitch, okay? That's the next step. We're going to type ls. It's going to give us a list of what's in there. Index.html. That's what we want to delete. We are going to type sudo, which is used for administrative tasks. Chone, change user. Negative r, recursive. You will have access to all the subdirectories and files located inside of slash var slash www slash html who am i um this will write your username into the command and then the directory we want to access and now you're going to need your password now we gave ourselves permission to fuck with that directory. We Basically, that's what happened. We just gave ourselves permission to fuck with the contents of that directory. We needed to do that in order to fuck with it, in order to remove index.html. So this is the climax. Are you guys ready to climax? Do, do, do. RM index.html. Are you guys ready for this? Now it's LS. It's it. Now let's go back to the World Wide Web. And now it's empty. If you type touch, it's going to create a file. So touch, give me the name of a file, any file. Um, Hatnix. Hatnix.php. Now you see Hatnix.php is right here. When I click on it, nothing happens. It's a blank file, right? That's why it's blank when I click on it. But when you, so... In order to view the files and run the files in your web server, you're going to save everything inside this directory, slash bar, slash www, slash html. Then when you go to this page here, it's going to give you a list of all of the files and directories located within that directory. Step 8, which is optional, 
point your IP address to an alias host name. We are going to edit the host file on our main computer, not in the virtual box. First, I'll show you how to do this on Linux, then I'll show you where the host file is if you're on Windows. sudo bim slash etc slash hosts. If you're using Windows, go to the Windows directory. Inside the Windows directory, go to System32. Then go into Drivers, ETC, and open your hosts file. Now we're going to edit our host file by typing the IP address followed by the alias that we'd like to give that IP. I'm giving mine the alias dev-site. So now instead of typing my IP address in the web browser, I can simply type dev-site and then I'm going to type a slash afterwards. Thank you for watching my video. Don't forget to subscribe for more super awesome LAMP stacking computer programming tutorials. Thank you again for watching and until next time, happy coding!